Today is uh, Monday, February 14th, 2022. It's Valentine's Day. It's celebrated here in the United States of America. Uh, kind of a day for people to share their love with one another or their friendship with one another. And, and we're, we're going to do that in a marvelous way all week long. And I'm using as a text Luke 23, verse 33 through 46. Let me read that now. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, where they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots, and the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you're coming to your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. So what we're going to do this week is I want to talk about this symbol, the cross. You see this symbol everywhere, all around the world. I saw it all over in Russia. I've seen it in Trinidad and Tobago, and I've seen it in every state of the United States. I've seen it in Germany. I've seen it in France. I've seen it in Italy. I've seen it in Israel. The cross, the cross, this symbol is everywhere. Some people wear this without any recognition of what it signifies. And some love this symbol and some hate it. What's in a symbol? What is in a symbol? How can a symbol, a picture, a word, a name, stir our emotions and call us to allegiance? You know, we could talk about it in terms of sports or we could talk about it in terms of nationality. If you put the American flag up, many people will, will love that flag. And in our day and age we live in, some will say they hate that flag. And you'll see uh, symbols all over cars. You'll see it on bumpers and backpacks and billboards and all over America. And so I'm holding up this cross again because we're going to talk about this cross. It's the most powerful symbol in the entire world. This symbol rouses emotion, instant emotion, and causes strong reaction wherever it appears. I'm going to talk about the cross this week by using the words that Jesus spoke while he was hanging on the cross. In effect, Jesus spoke seven sentences or seven messages to us as he suffered on the cross. And pondering these words that Jesus spoke on the cross has the potential to draw us to him and may, in fact, be the means for someone's personal salvation during the course of this week. I'm praying and believing for that. So the first three uh, messages were spoken on from nine o'clock in the morning until noon. So let's look today at the first message. It's a powerful, powerful message. It's found in Luke 23 and verse 34. And I want to read it again. It's, it's when they brought him to, to Calvary and crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right hand and one on his left. And he says these words, Father, 
forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now listen. Here is Jesus Christ, the one and only Son of Almighty God, being crucified on a cross, which was a Roman act of punishment, which the Jews had asked Pilate to take care of. And here are men surrounding now around this hill outside of Jerusalem who have whipped you with leather, stone, and bits of metal engraven in that, that leather. They've tore your flesh apart. They've taunted you. They've mocked you. And they've brought you to the worst point of humiliation anyone could face. And add to that exhaustion. And the only words spoken out of your mouth at the action they had taken against you is to pray to your Father in heaven. Forgive them. No bitterness toward his assailants, no verbal attacks on their life, no pointing of the finger, total humility and surrender to the will of the Father. And today, those words can be heard in your heart and in your spirit as the high priest Jesus Christ brings fully to the expression of your spirit the word of God provided by the completed act of Christ through his shed blood. I forgive you. Jesus today would release you from the debt of your sin, free you from its eternal punishment, and declare to you that you are forgiven. Have you needed to hear these words? You are forgiven. Can you hear Jesus? as he's saying this on the cross to those who had flagged him with that leather strap interspersed with stones and bits of metal. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Do you need the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to say to you today, you are forgiven? Let me tell you that he's ready as you turn from your sin and look to him and believe on him repenting from what you've done wrong, I forgive you. What every man, every woman, and every child needs to hear, you are forgiven. Let us pray. Lord, today someone needed to hear that. I'm praying they'll get to wherever this video is going to be exposed, whether it's Facebook or our website or somebody just shared it. And let forgiveness come. Let bondage go. And let the triumph of the Christ of the cross bring eternal life to those who've been dying in their sin. May they turn from their sin today and, and say, I confess I have done wrong. I repent of what I've done wrong. And I ask for your forgiveness and I receive you into my life. Thank you for giving me the gift of eternal life. I praise you. Your work is mighty. Thank you for those words. You are forgiven. Amen. Pray God's grace and peace over you today. If you need forgiveness, I invite you to go to our website. You can find there a little booklet called New Life in Christ. It's www.ckmweb.org. And uh, I encourage you, find somebody you know. Tell them what you've done. If you've asked forgiveness of your sins, have a blessed day today.